let us start with shanti part please sit in any comfortable meditative posture hands <clears throat> on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back all in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed become aware of the body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders arms back abdomen hips legs the whole body now shift your awareness to your eyebrow center bhru madhya and at the bhru madhya visualize the form of a brightly burning candle flame and maintaining the awareness on this we shall chant the mantra om three times together followed by the shanti mantra take in a deep breath om सहना सहना भुन सह वीकर वह तेजस्वीनावदीतमस्त मेदिषा वह ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ हरि ओं तत्सत gently rub your palms against each other place them on the closed eyes experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om tat sat namo narayan jai so a very warm welcome to all the participants of this in conversations episode and this episode is going to deal with some very important topic and before we go ahead i would like you to again observe a verse which i believe is very essential for our understanding the verse is sahitya sangeet kala hinaha sakshat pashu uchcha vishana hinaha which means that a who is devoid of literature music and arts is indeed just an animal without tails or horns this is something which is very crucial and something which we need to think about if there is one thing which differentiates animals and humans it is this thing and what is the basis of this animals don't have literature animals don't have music animals don't have uh, arts only humans and human civilization has that so what is the that one difference which creates this divide 
would anyone like to sh share the idea or what you feel what is the divide cause what causes this divide vekami buddhi vidam ji wisdom swami ji wisdom in human being difference differentiate ourselves from the uh, wisdom um, animals yes swami ji emotions wisdom and emotions yeah we could say that but there is something more fundamental would somebody else like to take uh, a guess साहित्य संगीत कला विहीन पशु पुच्छ विषाण हीन सो वॉट इज दैट विच क्रिएट साहित्य वॉज इट वॉट इज दैट विच क्रिएट संगीत वॉट इज दैट विच क्रिएट कला आर्ट्स वो क्या है जिससे हम अपने जीवन में ये सब देख सकते साहित्य संगीत कला विहीन साक्षात कुछ विषाण ही नहा तो वो क्या चीज है जिससे हम अपने जीवन में साहित्य संगीत और कला का अनुभव कर सकते हैं एनी लाइक वुड समी लाइक टू शेयर देयर व्यू उसका स्वामी जी आवर 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 एबिलिटी टू गो बियॉन्ड द बेसिक नीड्स फ्रॉम एन एक्सप्लोरेटरी परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज एनिमल्स would only be focused on the basic needs of food and other requirements i agree with that and in that sense you know what uh, uh, shivendra has mentioned that but what is it that allows us to have wisdom what is huh. it that allows us or instigates us if i may use that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go for those other pursuits which is not there in animals is not there in animals awareness swami ji very close very close what is awareness a factor of the consciousness consciousness okay so yes very close but there is something known as the mind okay it is only when you have a function called the mind that you can be aware that the consciousness can come in i am not speaking of the consciousness with the capital c i am speaking of being conscious being unconscious and all so what is it it is the mind and it is only in human beings that this mind has evolved to this level manavon mein aur pashuon mein अगर कुछ अंतर है तो यही है कि मानव में मन नाम की चीज है इसलिए तो वो मानव हो गए ना जिनमें मन है वो मानव हुए तो ये मन जो चीज है वो बड़ी पेचीदी चीज है द माइंड इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बट एल्यूसिव थिंग पकड़ में नहीं आती है यू कैन नॉट ग्रास्प वट द माइंड इज and this has been seen from time immemorial everybody all the civilizations and even pre civilizations they have grappled with this thing called the mind and they did not have a proper answer 
amongst the modern civilizations the greek civilization the egyptian civilization the persian civilization they were civilizations which spent a lot of time thinking about these finer aspects of life where you rise above the four basic instincts ahar nidra bhay maithun these are the four instincts and you rise above them and these civilizations have thought about it ye jo civilizations hain greek persian roman roman not so much but egyptians inhone in vishayon par bahut chintan manan vishleshan kiya and everybody has a opinion on this subject called mind we have socrates who has an opinion we have pythagoras who has an opinion we have plato who has an opinion we have aristotle who has given an opinion and all of them are varying and differing why we'll come to that later but one thing is certain that they have not been able to understand mind in its complete totality they could say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and everybody agreed to it they could say that the angle of a two angles of the triangle uh, all the three angles of the triangle will make 180 degrees and that comes to 180 degrees and everybody agreed to it lekin but this is something when it comes to the mind then there is lot of discussion display of different opinions why because there is something mysterious about the mind at the same time everybody is very interested in the mind and for quite some time after aristotle scientists did not really pay too much of attention to the mind aristotle gave a way of thinking and he said there is something known as a logic something known as reasoning the and he defined few things and he considered mind to be a he considered mind to be the function of the body of course i am putting it very simplistically bahut saral bhasha mein bol rahe hain is aasan karke aristotle ne man aur sharir ko ek maan liya aur sharir se man utpann hota hai aur man uske aadhar par hai and then we have in the 1700s a great thinker philosopher rene descartes who comes and he said they are two different things the mind and the body are two different things the mind body dualism as it is known as and this mind body dualism is something which differed from aristotle and everybody was caught up by that it made sense it made rational sense the carte the carte is also known for the cartesian logic which forms a very strong basis for modern science and he gave his opinion on the mind and then in what we consider as psychology is nothing but a study of the mind when science began at that time about 4 500 years ago the entire focus was on how the body functions what are the functions in the body and all other aspects 
the mind was not considered to be very important they considered that what on the basis of what aristotle said mind is something which is a function of the brain and it works that way however then it be, slowly it became clear that no there is something more than that in about 1850s 1860s again there was another effort made to try and understand this mysterious thing known as the mind and they formed one school of thought with a question what is consciousness as one of you had asked and they found out that there is a structure and it functions and that became the structuralism which became one force of thought another person asked why does the mind what is this consciousness for and that became functionalism and these two schools of thought became the basis of modern psychology and what is psychology psychology comes from the greek word again psyche means the soul or the breath logi means to study so it, this is the study of the mind and everybody has been trying to understand and they have found so many different aspects and they have gone into great detail but there is no single definition single understanding of all the aspects of the mind still later we have yet another school of thought behaviorism they completely put away that intangible thing called consciousness and they said we will measure and observe the functions and the responses and that is what we will look at that became psychology everything gave some answers but was not good enough then came the modern spoke of the father of modern psychology sigmund freud the modern psychologists like young adler and so on everybody has cognition gone into so many aspects but till today do you agree that no one has been able to give a very clear concise specific method of understanding this aspect of mind and i was pondering about this you know when this topic came i was pondering about this and i was thinking ki ye kyun aise ki man ke vishay mein itne bare mein पाश्चात्य सभ्यता में विषय में बात किया गया है दे हैव स्पोकन सो मच बट स्टिल दे हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू कम टू अ कंक्लूजन नो कंक्लूसिव एंड हैज कम ये भी बोल रहे हैं वो भी बोल रहे हैं वो भी बोल रहे हैं एंड देन इट केम टू मी दैट देर वॉज ए स्टोरी of the six blind men and the elephant malum hai wo kahani ha ha six blind men and the elephant matlab che log the jo andhe the aur haathi ko samajhne ka prayas kar rahe the ek ne pooch pakda bola haathi rassi ki tarah hai ek ne pair pakad liya बोला हाथी खंबे की तरह है एक ने सून पकड़ लिया बोला हाथी पाइप की तरह है और ऐसे सब लोग अपने अपने हिसाब से बतलाते जा रहे थे यू नो दैट स्टोरी राइट ऑल वेर राइट हा हाथी रस्सी की तरह है हाथी की सून पाइप की तरह है वो सब है लेकिन हाथी एक पूर्णत्व है इट इज अ कंप्लीशन ऑफ ऑल दिस और हाथी न सुंड है 
न पूछ है न पैर है न उसके दांत है न कान है उस सब का एक समाहित अवस्था है दैट टोटैलिटी दे हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड देन आई ट्राई टू थिंक वाई इज इट there is one important fact and you will also agree when you are in a problem koi samasya jab hai to us samasya mein pade reh kar ke us samasya ka samadhan nahi nikalta hai <coughs> if you are stuck in a problem you need to step out of the problem observe the problem from a higher perspective higher dimension if i can use that word and then you can understand the complete totality of the problem this is also understood very simply in suppose there is a two dimensional object two two dimension ka matlab length and breadth there is no height no depth and ek koi jeev hai jo दो डायमेंशन में है कैन अ पर्सन इन टू डायमेंशन अंडरस्टैंड द एंटायरिटी ऑफ द टू डायमेंशन नो टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ही हैज टू कम इन टू द थर्ड डायमेंशन वी इन द थर्ड डायमेंशन कैन अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग अबाउट द सेकंड डायमेंशन बट इफ वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द थर्ड डायमेंशन वी विल हैव टू गो इन टू दायर डायमेंशन दिस इज द वेरी फैक्ट why they have spoken so much about the mind every civilization has spoken about the mind yet they have not come to a conclusive proof and perhaps that is why gurudev swami satyanand ji said that yoga begins where psychology culminates the culmination point of psychology is the beginning point of yoga because yoga vedanta the indian philosophies they have analyzed this problem not only from an intellectual perspective but they have gone much deeper all these rishis i will call them rishis because a rishi is a person who thinks and contemplates they thought they contemplated they looked they understood all the things but from an intellectual perspective point number 1 and point number 2 from the dimension of the mind the eyes which see the ears which hear the nose which smells the tongue which tastes the skin which feels all these information go to the mind and it is processed in the mind when we think it is with the mind so therefore the problem was they were trying to find a solution to the problem by being in the same dimension of the problem and therefore they were like the story of those six blind men and the elephant ma sigmund freud he came very close to this and he spoke of a subject called meta psychology you might have heard of this word meta psychology we use this word metaphysics meta analysis a lot what does meta mean meta means going beyond transcending psychology psychology is study of the mind and meta psychology is the study of the system of psychology it is not study of the mind but it is a study of the system of psychology and freud try to speak about it he was successful to some degree too and he had some limitations too once swami ji said that if freud was born in india 
or had he been exposed to the indian philosophy he he would not have spoken the way he spoke many of us would know that freud is very famously known for uh, identifying or equating everything of the unconscious mind with the sexuality in a person swami ji said that had freud been in india he would have used the term kundalini instead of sexuality but just because he was never exposed to this science of the inner world the closest he could come was the word sexuality and that is what he used and he tried to give a higher aspect meta psychology trying to go beyond perhaps he felt that we are trying to address a problem by being in the problem we need to go beyond that the indian systems have done exactly that they spent a lot of time pondering over this fact and they came to know that there is something known as the body there is another thing known as the mind it is the mind which works and in a way directs the body but they at some point of time experienced that there is something even beyond meta transcending the mind and they discovered this to be a very subtle principle they termed it as the atma therefore in indian philosophy there is a triad which is spoken of the body the mind and the atma rath rathi uh, rath sarathi or rathi you have the car you have the person who is sitting in the car the passenger and you have the driver who is driving the car there are three different entities over there atma is the one who is sitting in the car without the atma nothing will happen but the atma doesn't do anything the atma gives instruction to the mind the sarathi and the sarathi continues and the sarathi is the one who deals with the body the atma doesn't have to do that they did not come to this a conclusion from their intellectual pursuits but they went deeper and deeper and deeper and then a day came when suddenly one person transcended experienced something higher came back and spoke about it oh there is this higher knowledge which i have experienced somebody else experienced that another person experienced that and the culmination the distillation of these experiences led us to these philosophies and this higher knowledge is what i can say is meta psychology in the truest sense something which transcends psychology psychology is studying the mind what is studying that that is the study of the atma when you go to the dimension of the atma one dimension higher then you can look at the body uh, sorry then you can look at the mind and you can analyze the mind in its totality and they gave the complete definition complete description of all of this that is what is spoken in vedanta that is what is spoken in the yoga shastras the yoga sutras of maharshi patanjali they can be considered to be the distillation of the psychology which is present in indian schools of systems and here they found out they spoke 
in very unequivocal terms the functioning they called the mind as antahkaran and they said there are four aspects to this antahkaran you have manas you have buddhi you have ahankar you have chitta and it these things which do the perception they do somebody somebody yes. sorry can you repeat the four uh, once again please uh, uh, manas manas buddhi buddhi ahankar ahankar chitta chitta these four form the antahkaran ah the nirvana shatakam mano buddhi ahankar chitta ni na ahankar chitta ni na ham no one and that is also spoken of by uh adi shankara bhagavad pad adi shankara yes. those of you we have done that swadhyay with tatva bodh you would remember he has defined everything they have spoken of how the evolution came about how the functioning takes place that is the complete breakdown and that breakdown is quite different from what the western counterparts speak of but here when you work through then you find everything starts making complete sense from a wider perspective and also when you zoom in to the smallest bit everything is explained and not only explained but they speak of systems how you can manipulate manage and slowly work up your path that practical path is the path of yoga maharshi patanjali very famously has quoted yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha and then the entire gamut begins he starts explaining everything every definition is taken step by step systematically and logically to explain how the chitta is formed what the chitta is how does it get modified and goes on explaining everything but they give yoga provides the practical arm of managing things the classical understanding can come through the study of the vedantic scriptures in many scriptures one of them being tatva bodh bhagavad pad has very clearly explained how the evolution takes place how the antahkaran is formed how there are five indriyas gyanendriyas how there are five karmendriyas how you have the five pranas how you have the antahkaran they form the totality you have the three avasthas jagrat swapna sushupti there is something also called turiya they have the three gunas sattva rajas tamas and how are they formed you have the five pranas how are they formed everything has been explained totally but they have not spoken about it only intellectually they have experienced it and spoken about it so therefore when we read it intellectually it may or may not really make sense to us immediately for that we need to contemplate and understand psychology is very good psychology is used in all aspects of life today if i want to sell something in the advertising industry there is a big section which thinks what should be the color what should be the shape what should be everything because they say oh this is how people will think based on that we make use of it 
they are just scratching the surface of the mind. The mind is much more powerful than that. How does there is one school of thought in psychology which speaks about how the external environment has an impact on us. बाहर की जो परिस्थिति है उससे हमारे मन पर क्या परिणाम पड़ता है जिससे हमारा व्यवहार बदलता है हाउ वी रिस्पॉन्ड टू द एक्सटर्नल सिचुएशन एंड दैट इज मेड यूज ऑफ इन मेनी आस्पेक्ट बट दैट इज ओनली वन पार्ट ऑफ द माइंड साइकोलॉजी फॉर ऑल इट्स एकमप्लिशमेंट कैनॉट कंक्लूसिवली प्रूव और मोर देन प्रूव गिव अस अ सोल्यूशन वाई specific problem comes up and if it comes up how do we solve that yoga provides a an answer if you go into the details of this philosophy then you will also find they speak of the chakras they speak of the samskaras they speak of the tatvas and they speak of how each chakra has got an impact on the behavior and how there is a connectivity and how do you work them through how do you bring that so found that the mind however amorphously is spoken of how can you control the mind there has to be some to control the mind today psychology has studied and it says that okay this is how we can use the principles of the mind but they can't definitively say that do a b c d and you will start controlling the mind yoga provides that there are clear cut steps spoken of because they have been able to analyze it from a higher dimension that is what yoga is about yoga is not just physical practices no yoga is that science which is the practical application of the ultimate knowledge and the ultimate knowledge is the knowledge who am i i need to know myself if i say i am the body then i need to know the body if i say i am the emotions i need to know why and how and where they came from why they affect me this way if i am the intellect then i need to understand this say i am the mind then i in that and that i need to explain every aspect of life and they found that there is one factor which is missing and only when they transcended the mind they found that final factor and it was like the final piece in the jigsaw puzzle and doing so then there was a change and everything started falling in place so today we are in a place of evolution many hundred thousand years ago our ancestors spoke of these subtle points in course of time they were lost and today we are discovering them again swami ji spoke of these matters which are so very subtle they he spoke of it in very clear concise terms and explained how things can work and he also gave very clear cut instructions how for us should we go ahead because at the time when maharshi patanjali spoke so many thousand years ago the quality of mind of people was different was a bit more stable today our mind is much more fickle 
so in such a situation what do we do what is possible what is not possible swami ji gave very clear scientific systematic answers to these things and this is what he said is yoga the study of the chakras the study of managing the mind the study of swara the study of prana the study of kundalini the study of that subtle energy which drives all of this that in reality is yoga and when you go into this depths of yoga then the questions posed by life start getting answered and that is why in today's world when so much emphasis is now being given towards the mind the next step has to be to be able to manage the mind to be able to harness the energy of the mind and that is the reason why yoga is becoming so very popular and so very in demand we have seen that in the last 30 40 50 years yoga has become wildly popular why is it just because uh, you can do some physical exercises but then we have gymnastics we have so many other aspects the reason is that yoga is the science of mind management if psychology is the science of study of the mind yoga is the yoga is the subject of mind management and in today's times it is this which is very very essential and we need to start about this in a systematic manner slow and steady just because yoga speaks of transcending the mind does not mean we can jump to that level right away we need to start with the basics first we have to befriend the mind and the mind can give us so many uh you know uh it can trick us in so many ways it can give us so many errors of perception you have a mirage i can see there is a lake oh I, of course a lake is there and when i go into the lake oof there is nothing there you know that story of draupadi and uh, duryodhan ha huh? yes swami ji that uh, he fell off uh, in that maya house yes. what is maya jo dikhta hai wo hai yes maya is the mind i mean he was so sure that oh that is there that is a mirage we have so many perceptions and we uh, based on that perception we spend our entire life that person he looked at me with a, a very funny gaze and he was looking this way he was doing this oh that means he was doing a b c i have formed such a firm opinion and based on that opinion i will take actions and 50 years later i realize oh my perception was not correct i never understood it could be that this is something which troubles us and psychology is unable to help us in that psychology is able to recognize that oh you are having a perceptual disorder oh you are having delusions oh you are having paranoia oh you have having schizophrenia oh you have having a personality disorder oh you have an affect disorder yes is all of that but solution is from wanting we need solutions in a holistic manner if you don't want to end up popping pills to smile and popping pills to cry and popping pills to sleep then we need to make use of this internal system and that is the need of the times the situation is such that every it is said that every third or fourth person in so called advanced countries 
is having psychological disturbance then tell me how can such a society be advanced mm -hmm. advanced in external technology but as far as internal technology is concerned they are at rudimentary levels it is our job to be able to bridge the two gaps in the same way as we had long time ago and many a time this journey begins with a crisis as i said i have a mirage i have an error in perception and when i have an error in perception i behave with that manner and sooner or later i come up with a problem and there is no way out and i am faced with something which i am not able to comprehend my mind goes into a tizzy and it is there that yoga begins in our life the bhagavad gita told by bhagwan shri krishna to arjun is a treatise on yoga but where did this start what is the beginning point of the bhagavad gita battlefield battlefield vishada swami ji arjuna vishada yoga ha what is vishada sadness swami ji is sadness sad conflict conflict so, 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 swami ji huh? conflict conflict you are using politically uh, you know uh, correct terminology see uh, uh, duvida 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 nahi arjun was in a nervous breakdown <laughs> arjun yes, was having a panic attack he was having a mental breakdown uh, it, 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 it has been explained my yes, hair was standing on end what yes. see i am not able to understand my mind cannot comprehend my body is perspiring my hands are shivering shivering my bows is falling my from is going my... down yes is that yes. anybody having a panic attack any having a mental breakdown what nowadays they call it beautiful world meltdown is having a <laughs> meltdown bahut acha lagta hai wo word all the symptoms are listed uh, out there right very true and how did bhagwan start he says you speak like a wise person but what you are speaking is utter nonsense and why is it then he started explaining explained the whole chapters the reality and then says now you decide and what did arjun say in the end nashto moham smrutir labdhwa my confusion the brain fog which i was having that has cleared i have understood everything in the correct perspective and i will do as you say he did not say that i am doing it because you have told me no 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 yoga is not a cult whoever thinks so is sadly mistaken Hmm. Arjun did not say that he he in in the eleventh chapter he said oh you are God himself you are everything you are the highest so therefore at the end of eleventh chapter itself okay you are God you are telling me I will do what you say did Gita end over there no Gita did not end over there Gita went on and on and on and on hmm. in the end. when he explained everything i and he told everything that is worth telling i have to you i have explained everything now it's up to you to decide what to do he did not tell he told very clearly i will not tell you what to do decision is yours arjun took the correct decision not because influenced by bhagwan of course he was influenced in a proper manner but not out of fear or duress but 
that understanding arose. Oh, it is this way. The, what I am seeing is a mirage. It is not that there is a lake over there. And when I my perception has changed, then I don't go and jump into that lake. I don't become Duryodhan. That is the important takeaway in our life and in of this session. How to be able to understand that? It always starts with a crisis. So if you have a crisis in your life, then I say congratulations. You are taking the first step to yoga. And that is how you should also say. And we have plenty of crisis in our life. Koi hai jiske jivan mein koi crisis nahi hai. Is there anybody who has no crisis in their life? Are yes, yeah, yes or no to bol dijiye. <laughs> so you sab mute pe hai aur kaise jawab de aapko de hi samajh mein aa raha hai. Yes or no? Yes, angutha upar kar dijiye. No hai to angutha niche kar dijiye. Aapko unmute bhi karne ki zarurat nahi hai. जरूर सर जी अभी तक तो ऐसा एक्सपीरियंस नो क्राइसिस वाला एक्सपीरियंस हुआ नहीं है स्वामी जी सो आंसर इज नो टाइम देयर इज अ क्राइसिस इन लाइफ एवरी टाइम देयर इज अ क्राइसिस बॉस गाली दे दिया क्राइसिस नहीं होता है क्या गुस्सा नहीं आता है क्या आपको हो सकता है नहीं आता है बहुत लोगों को नहीं नहीं सर हां कोई अपने मन के विरुद्ध कुछ चीज हो गया एकदम मन एकदम अटपटा हो जाता है अरे बाप रे अब क्या करें जीवन तो खत्म हो गया डोंट यू फील सडनली डिप्रेस एंड डिजेक्टेड इट वी डोंट हैव टू हैव अ बिग क्राइसिस लाइक इट वाज इन अर्जुन सिचुएशन इतना बड़ा होने की व्हाई डू यू हैव टू वेट टिल द वाटर कम्स टिल दिस लेवल फिर हाथ पैर मारने की क्या जरूरत है जब पानी पैर के पास ही आ जाता है घुटने के पास ही आ जाता है जग जाना है जी नहीं बिल्कुल समझिए तो करना जरूरी है और जब हम ये करते हैं तब अपने जीवन में परिवर्तन होता है तब अपने जीवन में मन को मैनेज करने की कला मिलती है और तब कबीरदास जी की वाणी हमको समझ में आती है कबीरदास जी बोले थे मैं तो उन संतन का दास जिनने मन को मार लिया कबीरदास जी बोले हैं मैं तो उन संतन का दास जिनने मन को मार लिया मन को मार लिया का मतलब ये नहीं होता है कि मन को गोली मार देना है गाना भी है ना गोली मार है ना ऐसा है ना वो वाला गोली नहीं बोल रहे हैं कबीरदास जी क्या बोल रहे हैं मन को जिसने वश में कर लिया ऐसे जो संत हैं रहने दो ना दो ना दोनों अलग अलग मम्मी तो कहला से इन संतों अच्छा, हम डर गए ये वाला अलग था ये देखो सेक्समी सीड है ना मैं उन संतन का दास जिनने मन को मार लिया एंड दैट इज द अल्टीमेट एम हम लोग तो में जो समाधि का पढ़ रहे हैं उसमें भी तो उन्होंने बोला है ना व्हाट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ योगा समाधि भावनार्थ क्लेश अनुकरणार्थ च याद है जो जो लोग स्वाध्याय में हैं जी स्वामी जी स्वामी जी क्लेश तनुकरण क्लेश क्या होता है वही है ना कि दिखता है कि पानी है लेकिन मालूम है मालूम है कि पानी नहीं है मन में जो क्लेश पैदा हो गया क्लेश तनुकरण तनुकरण यानी कम करते जाना है उसका रास्ता योग है और वो रास्ता समझने के कारण है मन को समझने के कारण है और मन को मैनेज करने की कला बतलाने के कारण तो हम लोगों ने एक यात्रा देखी आदिकाल से 
हमारी सभ्यता अनेक सभ्यताओं में मन के विषय में प्रश्न आया शुरू कहां से हुआ हमारा आवर डिस्कशन आई एम सॉरी आई फॉर्गॉट देर आर सम पीपल हु डोंट नो इंग्लिश आवर डिस्कशन हमारी बात वहां शुरू हुई संगीत साहित्य संगीत कला विहीन साक्षात पशु पुच्छ विषाण ही नहा a person who does not know who does not have sangeet sahitya and kala in his life is just like an animal because it is this which differentiates humans from animals and that is because of the stuff called mind and everybody has been trying to understand the mind but we cannot understand the mind by being in the dimension of the mind we have to get out of the dimension of the mind to understand the mind in its completeness and to do that we need a practical solution something which can transcend the mind that is yoga and that is the reason why swami satyanand ji very clearly mentioned yoga begins where psychology culminates the culmination of psychology is the beginning of yoga psychology studies the mind and the behavior of the mind and it culminates at that point and when you go beyond yoga tells us how to go beyond that is why yoga is very very popular in today's times because the mind has become totally out of control and how do we manage the mind that is told by yoga so this was the discussion on psychology meta psychology and yoga before we conclude if you have anything to share anything to add or anything to ask we can spend few minutes on that over to all of you Swami ji, any uh, 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 perspectives on yes, mind creates the mirage, uh, uh, as it is said. Uh, uh, right, I mean, if one of the Mahavakyas, uh, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya, everything is a mirage in front of us. But uh, any perspectives on uh, uh, that kind of makes to believe that mind is a villain and who jhoot bolta hai, but actually. mind is mind i mean why is it created that way or uh, why does it do it that way that's the sort of a thing to say that agar itna bura hai to wo hai kyun aur uh, uska uh, srishtikaran hi kyun hua hai is what was the sort of a question. thought we just kiya yeah, prashna pariksha dena bahut kathin lagta hai mann परीक्षा देने का भगवान जाने इन लोगों ने परीक्षा क्यों बनाए हैं सीधा हम दे देते बन गए क्लास वन की परीक्षा दो क्लास टू की परीक्षा दो क्लास थ्री की परीक्षा दो गिव सो मेनी क्लास वन ग्रेड टू ग्रेड थ्री ग्रेड फोर ग्रेड फाइव ग्रेड सिक्स ग्रेड एट ग्रेड टेन ग्रेड जूनियर कॉलेज सीनियर कॉलेज मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड देन ऑल ऑफ दैट ओ गॉड वाई डू वी हैव टू डू दैट वी हैव टू डू दैट बिकॉज दैट वे we are able to evolve refine more than evolve refine our abilities so these mirages which are which come up are there as a stepping stone to refine ourselves a methodology by which we can do the involution from mm-hmm. the top we have come to the bottom and from bottom how do we go back to the top to do that we need some tools all of this what you said is just the tools to enable us to do that mm-hmm. so god says oh they want to come up how can they come up hello i give them something by which they come up and then we say oh Giving me all these exams. Hmm. 
True, Swamiji. True. <laughs> true, 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 Swamiji. So, so once you understand one stage, right, and then again challenge it to say this is mithya, right? Beyond that, go beyond that. A K K K K K. You you keep on progressing. No, you, uh, don't, you don't have to actually do that way. Uh, hmm. Do you really have when you were a five or six or seven year old child, and uh, you were very uh, passionately attached to your doll or your toy mistake mm -hmm. if that toy broke what the happened? world the world has ended yes world has ended mm -hmm. and no matter what your father or your mother or if you are doing it to your child no matter what you explain to that child kuch samajh mein nahi aata hai us samay but then the same child Six months later or one year later, hmm. like, ah, hmm. he has lost complete interest in that. That evolution happens. And then there is a difference which happens automatically. You do not have to make effort. When you feel tired, you do not have to make effort to sleep. Sleep comes when you are rested. You do not have to make an effort to get up. Wakefulness comes naturally. Evolution is ways natural. You don't have to make much of effort in that. So when things are happening spontaneously, that means you are 100% in tune with nature. Beautiful, Swamiji. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, Swamiji, one uh, corollary question to that is, uh, would it be, I don't know whether it is right, am I framing it itself right? Is it it you use the mind itself to conquer the mind and go beyond ek ek karke ek ek karke and then sort of aage nikalte jayenge aap us us tarah se hi iska process hoga There are two ways in this First way is what you have said the way of yoga and also the way of tantra Kaate se kaata nikalo dono time अगर आपके हाथ में इफ देर इज अर्न विच हेज गॉन इन यू कैनॉट यूज यू नो सॉफ्ट ब्रश टू टेक इट आउट यू नीड टू यूज अनादर थॉर्न यू और यू नीड बट यू नीड टू यूज द सेम प्रिंसिपल टू टेक इट आउट एंड वंस यू टेक बोथ द प्रिंसिपल आउट यू डिस्कार्ड बोथ ऑफ देम ब्यूटिफुल वन वे अनादर वे इज इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल to conquer the mind with the mind you will be fighting with the mind it is like i am playing chess from both sides mm -hmm. to win because you know everything so you are just going to go round and round and round and round in circles so to conquer the mind you need the heart not this heart which is unrefined the refined heart the higher heart that is bhakti bhakti when you have bhakti it happens spontaneously and happens easily but to attain bhakti is a process. so there are two ways one is that you use the uh, hara path hmm. you have a thorn you have to grit your teeth and as it is coming out there is a lot of pain you have to grit your teeth and not out in pain etc or then you use bhakti you use the higher heart to conquer those two ways true sameesh so nice so nice okay. so thank you so much beyond 8:30 if there is no more questions or else to be shared let us conclude sami ji i have one question sure Amiji, yoga Nanda always talk about the Kriya Yoga. So what is Kriya? I'm prarthana. not. Talking. One prarthana. Yoga Nanda, don't say it. Paramahansa Yoga Nanda, don't say it. Okay, Paramahansa Yoga Nanda. Sorry, Ji, Swami Ji, sorry, Swami Ji. I was just listening to that. So Paramahansa Yoga Nanda Ji said that you know he always talks about Kriya Yoga. So what is what is that, Swami? Is it a collection of uh, some Kriyas or just a meditation, brain meditation and no just it is it is a very nice path swami ji spoke of kriya yoga 
Swami Ji as Paramhans Yogananda is in the lineage of Mahavatar Baba Ji, Lahari Mahashay, Sri Yukteswar and Paramhans Yogananda. But when Gurudev Swami Satyanandji was sent out from Rishikesh, that time Swamiji said to him, he gave him Kriya Yoga and he said, Abhi nahi karna hai. Jab jaan lo, samay aega tum apne se karoge. And based on that, Swamiji also spoke about Kriya Yoga. And Swamiji spoke very nicely. What I will speak is based on that knowledge. He said, I tell, aankhe band kar lo, close your eyes, focus your mind at the eyebrow center, become aware of the eyebrow center, lose your awareness of everything else. As long as I have not said this, my mind is quiet. The moment I say, there is nothing in the mind. The moment I sit down to meditate, my mind starts jumping like a monkey. All thoughts start coming in and, oh my God, if I sit down to do japa, that is the time all thoughts will come in. Before that, after that, mind is quiet. What do we do? Very difficult. My emotions, to say that yeah, I have to conquer... Uh, the mind through the higher heart, etc., etc. Okay, but my situation is that I am down in the dumps. So what to do? He said that there are some systems of practice by which this energy is channelized and triggered. In Kriya Yoga, they don't ask you, please focus your mind, no thoughts, steady body, everything. They say, no, just start doing things. And when you start doing things, the circuit changes and the circuit changes, the energy patterns change and when these energy patterns change, they change the patterns of your mind. They change the patterns of the bodily functions. They change everything. Those sets of practices are known as Kriya Yoga. They are a combination of Tantric practices. They are a combination of Yogic practices. In fact, Yoga has the basis in Tantra. So, when we speak of Tantra, we don't mean wine, women and sex. No. We mean that science can help us expand our consciousness. Tanoti Trayate. We say, na, Rasayan. Kya bolte hai? Rasayan. Rasayan Tantra bolte hai, na? Bhugol Tantra bolte hai na? So, Tantra means a science and very, very systematic. When in chemistry, we isolate an element and you take another element, you connect them, you have water. Hydrogen, oxygen, catalyze, proper combination, water has come. Oh my God, this is magic. No, it's not magic. It is science. In the same way as this is the science of the external world, Tantra is the science of the internal world. This is that distilled, powerful systems by which you can make that change within. But since it is distilled, powerful, if you are doing a chemical experiment, not you and I, everybody can't just go and do a chemical experiment. You need to be properly trained. That is why Tantra, you need to have that and if you don't uh, have proper, eh, you can misuse. Tantra was a very powerful sign, was misused. And so it got a bad name. But the original meaning is this. Systems, practices by which you can expand your consciousness. All those siddhis which are spoken of, they come in. So many other things come in. But they are side effects. The main thing is your awareness, your consciousness is expanding. And you become aware of so many more. Oh, I am not just his body. I am not just his mind. I am not the senses. I am that immortal self. That experience comes in. That experience, they say, which comes when you take those recreational drugs, the LSD and the weed and God only knows what else. 
all those things, but they don't come with the side effects. You can, because what are those drugs? They are affecting the ability of the brain, the perceptions. It happens voluntarily. This happens voluntarily with complete control and it allows us to progress and evolve. So, a combination of these practices wherein you do not really have to fight the mind, that is known as Kriya Yoga. Fantastic. Thank you, Samiji. Yeah. Samiji, one smart question. Samiji, why it has been said to be initiated by Guru and what does that mean? Very nice question. Yeah, very important. You see, we are dealing with something which is beyond our senses. That has been the topic of the entire session. And if I have to go to Mount Everest, do I just go up? Oh, it's just climbing the mind to take one step and then another step. That's all we have to do. One step at a time. Oh, anybody can do it. I'll just go on myself. Do I do that? It'll be a disaster. It'll be a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can, do, but we need a guide. And take any guide, a person who has been able to cl uh, climb up a small hillock, do we take him as a guide to climb the Mount Everest? Whom do we take as a guide to Mount Everest? Someone who has already climbed at least once uh, or Experience. more than that, yeah. Experienced and doing it. The pitfalls. Uh, uh, Babu, udar se mat jaiye, idar se jaiye, vaha jayenge, khai padega vaha. When you go, they will tell, no, 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 don't, don't go this way, come this way. It might appear longer, but over there, you'll get stuck. So, he knows the pitfalls. Now, if you want to go to just Mount Everest, you need very, very clear, perfect guide. And when you want to go into this inner journey where you don't have the road map, where nothing is known, we are speaking of transcending the mind. Oh my God. We don't even know what the mind is capable of. The mind is capable of so many things. You just take a small pill. Suddenly you start seeing things. And then the effect goes away and nothing is seen. What is happening? The mind is capable of so many things. Mind is also capable of so many powerful things, not only negative. So how do we manage this mind? How do we transcend this mind? I don't even know this mind. And I am saying that I will just walk this path on my own. Is it not a foolish idea? Is a stupid idea. It's not possible. Yes. That is the role of the Guru. What is Guru? The dispeller of darkness. In Shanti part, what do we say? Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyote Gamaya Mrutyorma Amrutam Gamaya What is that? Asat. Asat is what the mirages that we are surrounded. From that, take me to the highest. So I am in all these confusions. That's all the gloom, the darkness. Take me to the light. Everything is this, that. I am not able to. That transcendence which has to take place. Mrutyorma amrutam kamaya. Oh my God, I will die. I will do this, I will do that. But then let me experience. Oh, I am not dying. It is this body which is dying. For example, let us say that I identify myself with this shirt. And if I have to take this shirt out, I will have a nervous breakdown. No, 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 no. I will stop existing. Like I can't let go of this shirt. But when that shirt is taken away from me, 
and then says, okay, now who are you? Oh, I am still I. The shirt is not there, but I am still I. At the moment, we are identifying with this shirt. Somebody has a shirt, somebody has a cardigan, somebody has something, something, something. This is that body. The shirt is the body. But we have identified it completely. Even now, when we speak about it, it's an intellectual understanding. But that's not the experience. So how can I have that experience? When I have not even managed to understand mind in itself. So I need to have a person who has transcended and comes back out of compassion. Bacha logon ko mushkil hai nahi ja sakte hai. Such people are gurus. In today's parlance, everybody and anybody becomes a guru. But in spiritual dimension, the word guru is used in very great reverence and very sacrosanct meaning. A person who has experienced the transcendental truth is alone a guru. Ah, others are teachers. Others are shikshaks. That person is a guru. And I have my music teacher. I have this. I have that. I have that. So, therefore, they have said such a person is the Sat Guru. Sat means the truth, the ultimate. Who can take you beyond? That person need not be uh, in beautiful clothes or this, that, the other because they are on a different dimension. And it's not easy to recognize them. It's very difficult. And it is even more difficult to walk that path because we are stuck with the perceptions of the mind. I see the mirage as the truth. How can I say it's not the truth? You are cheating me. What can be said? The guru can say, okay, Baba, you think you, I'm cheating you, fine. Go your way. Go. Beyond that, guru can't say anything. We are, so, therefore, we need to have such a person. And the definition, the uh, experience of such person is totally different. It comes from a different dimension. And that is the necessity of Guru in our life. If we are serious about exploring this path of the That's the significance of Prabhaji, you are muted. We can't hear you, Prabhaji. Now? Yes, now we can. Now, I was asking about Adhikari and Guru. Please, please explain this. Adhikari? Uh, in for yoga, this Adhikari that word comes in at ah, see adhikari is totally different ah that is what i was adhikari means do i have the prerequisites or the qualifications i want to go for engineering they will say have you passed class 12 no sir you are not qualified please go first do that so i am not adhikari I don't have adhikar, authority. So that is the adhikari. Means I am a fit person to follow that path. That is why the sadhana chatushtai, those four aspects of sadhana which I need to do so that I can become fit for walking this path. And guru is guru. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we are more than half an hour more. I think now we need to conclude. Otherwise, we are going to Namo Namaji, thank you so much. Very nice experience today. Very nice.